Hello everyone, I'm with John Clark, who's a psychotherapist and a business consultant. Uh, he's also a licensed professional counselor and entrepreneur, a private practice consultant. He's going to tell you all about how he uh, came up with all this uh, during the last few years in only a few years, really. Uh, yeah. Right now, John lives in Paris, and I'm honored to be in the same mastermind group with him, the Iron Sharpens Iron Mastermind. Uh, and John is going to talk about the life-changing magic of funnels, but in a very, uh, very visible and easy way to understand. And I'm so thankful for that because uh, usually we just don't really understand what is a sales funnel. So. John, thank you for uh, your presence. And if you can tell us more about how did you become what you are doing right now and uh, tell sure. more about your story before going deep into this uh, sales funnel. Yeah, good question. And thanks for having me. I had um, I started my first private practice in, uh, in the US in San Francisco in 2013. And around this time I was working another full-time job I was actually driving for uber at the same time to be <laughs> uh, kind of, that. <laughs> as we call it, bootstrapping my business so I was working three days really and <clears throat> what I realized when I was starting my first business it was a private practice or a, a clinic in San Francisco was that um, I had business training and was not prepared to become a business owner and the biggest problem I had was getting clients from my practice. This is mm -hmm. still the most uh, challenging problem of therapists and psychiatrists is getting clients consistently. <clears throat> Better yet, getting clients consistently online. So I spent many nights um, teaching myself how to build websites and do SEO and Google ads and uh, copywriting and things like that. And that was almost seven years ago. <clears throat> I started to find some things that were working and my friends in San Francisco who were also therapists started to ask me for help. And early on, I would do it for free or for the cost of a beer. And I would say, if you keep buying me beers, I will keep telling you my secrets and giving you free consulting. And then about a month after that, I said, I need to start charging for this. <laughs> so I hosted a free workshop in the public library in San Francisco it was basically um, like a free workshop that led into a paid workshop. And that was the very first time I actually charged money for this. Now I do this full time. I have a small team, a small remote team around the world. Um, I've also owned a marketing company where we were servicing about 150 Google ads accounts around the country. Uh, I owned a, a virtual assistant company in the Philippines for a while. And uh, I recently sold my most recent business uh, which was another clinic in uh, North Carolina on the East Coast. And I did that right before moving to Paris for my wife's job. She works at a startup here in Paris. And yeah, now I run this business full time. Uh, it's also funny to be uh, doing a meeting at this hour because usually my day doesn't really start until about 2 p.m. <laughs> when my clients start waking up on the East Coast. So I'm really not a morning person, but, uh, you know. Okay. I was happy to do do a favor for a friend at 9 a.m. So you're 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 lucky. Yeah, I'm so thankful, John, uh, because uh, you have so much to bring us uh, through what you're going to share. But can you tell us more about the mindset shifts that you've been through all these years? Because it sounds easy, like, but it's not easy what you did. Yeah. You change a lot of things. So can you tell yeah. us more about that? I've had a lot of people ask me, like, what gives you the right to become a business consultant or to, to, to charge, you know, high fees? In fact, my own brother-in-law said the brother or the, sorry, the wife, uh, the husband of my of my sister, well, confused. Um, mm -hmm. He asked me one time, he was like, well, don't you have a credential or something? Or don't you need like a license to be a business consultant or an entrepreneur? And I have, thankfully, I haven't struggled too much with imposter syndrome. Um, because my idea and my mindset around this is I'm an expert because I'm willing to become an expert and I'm willing to teach what I learned. And I'm also willing to acknowledge what I don't know. So I think being a, an entrepreneur means being willing to solve problems for people. And 
because of that, I'm always willing to <clears throat> solve new and interesting problems for people or for my clients and my students. And what I would say is no one is going to give you permission to start putting yourself out there to start making uh, you know, a YouTube channel or a podcast or to position yourself as an expert. And the other quick thing I'll say about content is that people have it all wrong. They think that they need to know everything and be a total expert before they start putting out content. It's actually, it's actually not true. Your, your content should be your process of discovering what you're learning. So if I learn something today about sales funnels or something new today about copywriting, I instantly make a piece of content about that. Um, and that's and I'm kind of documenting my learning process, right? I'm documenting my failures. I'm documenting when my virtual assistant company in the Philippines failed. Um, and that is, that's the trick, I think, is to realize you're going to fail, fail forward, right, all the time. And if you can embrace that, then you can, I think, you can be an entrepreneur. At the same time, it's really not for everyone. You have to be pretty tough, and you have to be willing to ride out some some lows, um, some some tough moments. Wow, that's amazing! Yeah, and as you said, like any, there's no business school that is going to teach us what you're going to teach us anyway. So you're an expert yeah. because you know stuff. You've have results, and you've helped your clients, and yeah. that's it, right? You have to be willing to be self-promotional. And I'm really fascinated with uh, by living in Paris, obviously, as an American, because I've had some French entrepreneurs ask me, like, wow, I can't believe you, you know, are like that on your podcast or have a YouTube channel. Or uh, I remember someone at an event was, like, reading the description of my podcast. And in that it said, you know, the Private Practice Workshop podcast is the only podcast you need to start, grow, and scale your private practice. And they were like, Why, how, how are you able to say that? Like, who gave you permission to say that? Like, I can't believe you're so self-promotional. Like, some people in France in particular have been shocked at how at, that that's very self-promotional. And you just have to push through that, right? I think it's fascinating. But you have to be okay with turning the camera on yourself. And really, it's not about me. It's about my clients. It's about the people, my audience, and helping them grow. So one way to deal with our own self-consciousness and like anxiety about having the attention on us is to realize it's not really about us. It's really about the journey of people watching and helping them solve problems. So. Okay. Awesome, John. So I think we can, start, we could start now. So you, cool. have, you can uh, tell us what you've prepared for us. Yeah, let's get right into it. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. And I also say that, <clears throat> you, you know, If you're just learning about funnels, then this is just going to be the start. Uh, I'm going to give you a lot of information, and it's going to take a bit for it to settle in. Uh, I'm also going to give you all a chance to um, to book a free call with me or book a, a, a not a sales call, but an actual consult call with me if you want help with this stuff, whether it's existing funnels or setting up your first funnel. So. You already know who I am. I kind of talk through this stuff, so let's just keep moving. Um, this is my brand, <clears throat> and I'm going to basically show you where some sales funnels live within my website. So I'm going to show you, first of all, how to know when you're in a sales funnel. Okay, so we're going to come back to this view in just a second, but this is my my main site and my uh, where all my content lives. <clears throat> a funnel is anything that leads a customer toward a purchase, and I think I could pause on that for a second because... When you realize that, you realize that funnels are everywhere. <clears throat> They look different depending on the context. And we're always in funnels. We're always in funnels, okay? So funnels can be simple. They can be extremely complex. And it's the complex ones that tend to really overwhelm people and think, wow, I don't know how to set up a funnel or I'm not good at funnels or whatever the belief is. Whoops. Okay. <clears throat> to visualize, right? This is uh, a visual for a funnel. You have people starting at the top, and as you move through it, the funnel literally gets more narrow, and it ends in a sale, right? So roughly, we're, we're getting people's attention, and we're strategically leading them toward a sale. That's really all a funnel is. This is a real-life funnel example, one I just kind of made up. <clears throat> so you're walking down the streets, let's say you're in Paris, and you see a little sign on the sidewalk that, uh, that entices you to enter you know, their grocery store and they're saying, you know, we have a buy one, get one free on tomatoes or on organic produce. 
Okay, so <clears throat> the first part of the funnel worked. It got you into the store. It immediately shows you that produce at the front of the store that's on sale, right? So it's already leading you toward, a, toward that sale, continuing to lead you toward that sale. Okay, so you, you get that produce, you're going to buy it, and you think, well, I'm getting a great deal, um, <clears throat> so I'm going to head to the checkout line, and I'm going to buy my produce, and I'm, I'm really, you know, lucking out today. Well, you get to the front and there's all this stuff at the front, these one to five dollar products, hmm. right, that are so tempting to buy, whether it's a piece of chocolate or some gum or a magazine. Well, those are the upsells, right? You're still in that funnel. Those items are positioned there strategically to get you to make an additional small purchase, right? Because when you have your credit card out, you're, you're more likely to then buy something small or to add on something small. Right. Um, I was just at Naturalia yesterday, and as you're checking out, they say, "Would you like any bread with that?" Right. <laughs> That's the upsell. And of course, I go to the boulangerie for my bread, so I don't get it at Naturalia. <laughs> <laughs> like a, like a good Parisian, I go to the, the right place for it. Yeah. <clears throat> Finally, they ask you, "Do you have a fidelity card?" And if not, they're going to ask to collect your email address and they're going to continue to sell you into their products by email, right? This is a real life funnel example, right? Well, one that you might not think that you're in or might, that you might not think of, but really exists, right? Okay, <clears throat> so let's get into the stuff that's going to apply to most people watching this. A typical online funnel is basically a series of pages, videos, or webinars that could be live or replay. We're going to talk about those emails and sometimes retargeting ads that strategically lead people toward a sale. This is not a comprehensive list, but it's basically anything online that is strategically put together and using automation is leading people toward a sale or even just toward a, a strategy call or a, a sales call. <clears throat> Let's take a look at one of my funnels, and this is um, really my, my main funnel. It's my highest performing funnel, and it is for my fully booked program. So you're here on the homepage of my website, and the main calls to action are to work with me, which is actually going to lead you to this funnel again, <clears throat> or get the free online training, right? So you're offering something free in order to your email address and get them into your funnel. So what happens when a, uh, a visitor clicks here on the get the free online training button <clears throat> is they're going to head to basically the, the registration page for my funnel. Okay. So this is what's called an evergreen webinar funnel or a strategy session funnel. But this one is running all the time and it's not live. So it's important to know that, that this one is not live, but we'll talk about live funnels. Um, I'm telling them what it's about. I'm telling them why they should opt in. I even on this one have a little uh, a little countdown to when the next replay is beginning. Gives it a little bit of urgency here. Um, <clears throat> and they can continue to the next step. They're gonna see an opt-in box and really all I need is their, their first name and email address in order to um, have what I need to really warm up that lead, okay? They opt in the free training and they immediately get the chance to start watching that free training, right? Um, they can't pause or fast forward this. They need to watch it or they leave, and that's okay. We're going to give them that option. This, this training video goes on for 30 or 40 minutes, and in this video, I'm adding value. I'm teaching three pieces of my course, basically, and, of course, I'm peppering in testimonials, social proof, you know, what my students have said about Fully Booked, um, and at the end, I'm basically saying the call to action is if you want to learn more, if you want the same results that these people have gotten, these therapists have gotten, click the button below to apply for a strategy session. So <clears throat> in reality, they can move through this funnel very quickly and be almost at the end of it once they book their call. They move through, they book their call with a simple Calendly link, and, um, and they're on our calendar at that point. They see a, you know, a simple kind of confirmation page, and they're basically at the end of the funnel if they've made it this far. <clears throat> now, what happens if they didn't make it this far? Well, that's really common. <clears throat> One of the worst things you could do is just to let a lead go. Um, you've worked so hard through your blogs, your Instagram, your YouTube channel, to your Facebook ads to drive people to your funnels and to your, your site. If you don't continue to nurture and follow up with those leads, you're going to lose people. So what do we do? 
But one thing we do is we continue to prompt them to schedule that strategy session through an automated email sequence. This is built in Active Campaign, but you can build something like this in pretty much any email software uh, on the market these days. Stop me if I'm going too fast or if no, you have no. any That's awesome. questions or anything. So <clears throat> the person, you know, op they, they, let's say they X out or they're watching it on their phone. We want to continue to provide that opportunity to get them on the phone, right? And for us to offer that strategy session. So these emails in, in, in this particular funnel are going to go out for about the next 10 to 14 days um, and continue to call people to action and send them back to that, that, that uh, calendar page. We're also going to give them a couple chances to go back to that replay page and watch the video again if they haven't, because it's really important. In reality, that is kind of like the first half of our sales process. We're providing value, we're showing, we're, we're building proof, right? We're giving testimonials. You might even do some objection handling in that video so that when you get them on the call, they already know that this, whatever you're selling has value, it works, right? I know it's gonna be an investment, I know I'm gonna have to do the work, and I just wanna know like how much does it cost and how when can I get started? So. If you handle this part really well, <clears throat> your sales process is going to be a lot further along. Can you tell us more about why the strategy call uh, is about and mm -hmm. why is it uh, really important? It's really simple. So I personally follow the script. Um, you don't have to, but I highly recommend that you do. You should have a process that you walk people through. This is effectively my script. So, Ling in, what led you to um, reach out for the call today? Well, I have a therapy practice and I just don't have any clients. Okay, so tell me more about that. What have you tried so far? What hasn't worked? Well, I've tried networking, I've tried going to doctor's offices, I've tried, you know, blogging and it's just not working, et cetera. Okay, so how much money are you making right now in this business? Well, I'm only making $100 a week. Where do you want that number to be a year from now? Well, I want to be making, you know, six thousand a month at least. Okay, great. What's you know, what do you, what's motivating you to get there? Why is that six thousand so important? In other words, how would that help your life? Well, I could, you know, um, I could help my family. I could put my kid in, you know, private school. Can pay off debt. <clears throat> so you start to uh, associate basically your offer. Uh, you it's kind of attach it to an outcome for them, right? A personal outcome for them. So you really need this therapy practice to work so that you can X, Y, and Z. Once you've done that and you've basically uh, understood the outcome that they want, then and only when only then can you start to kind of position your product or your services or your mastermind group or whatever as part of the solution. And you say, great, well, listen, I'm an expert at helping therapists get new clients consistently. I do that through my fully booked program, the five-step program, it lasts five weeks. What questions do you have? And then you let them ask the questions. You let them fill in the blanks, right? And you only answer the questions that they have about the program. Because a lot of times when I ask this question and I say, I just tell them that, you know, fully booked is a five-week program, then sometimes they'll just say, great, sign me up, or how much is it, right? And then you talk about price. So you tell them enough, you answer their questions, you make sure it's the right thing for them. But you really stay focused on, again, how life could be different as a result of your product or service. You don't get too much into the nitty gritty or the details or, you know, how long the lessons are because that stuff doesn't really matter. What matters is that you can get people to the finish line, to the outcome that they want. You close the sale right there on the call. Um, we personally offer an incentive, like an incentive-based pricing where if they sign up on the call, they get a better price than if they sign up later. Um, that really helps move people through our process. It helps people get off the fence. Um, it helps select people who are really serious and are going to do the work and commit and be decisive versus those are gonna, who are going to be very anxious students, very problematic, very demanding. Um, and then that's basically the end of the sales process. Wow. Wow. It's amazing. And that you cannot do it without having someone on the call, right? That's way too difficult. We should talk about that, actually, because you can. Um, <clears throat> you can do that through a sales page. Okay. The conversion is not going to be as good. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, at what price range would you recommend mm -hmm. to start having those strategic calls? 
1995 and above. So $1,995 and above. Okay. Yeah. I would say anything around that price. And we've experimented with this quite a bit. We've done live launches in a product that's 997, you know, $997 can sell just fine with, without a sales call, with a sales page, with a, a live webinar, with email follow-ups, with Facebook retargeting ads. But I would say higher ticket programs like 1995 and above, you're going to need to get people on the phone in general. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, John. Cool. All right. <clears throat> so we go back to our little um, image here of a sales funnel. And I want you to think about this for your own business, right? Where are you leading people? Well, you have your content ecosystem. And uh, hopefully if you're following Ling in, you have a content ecosystem. <laughs> I'm sure he's taught you about it. This is your blog, your podcast, your YouTube, your Facebook lives, whatever it is. Ideally, you want to be creating content <clears throat> that is based on your offer. So because fully booked helps therapists get clients, I want to do a Facebook Live about getting clients or the five myths of getting clients or the five most common therapy mistakes or, or therapist website mistakes. So I base my content around my offer and the call to action is to check out the free training, right? Or book the free strategy session. <clears throat> What's really important is that you understand if you're doing a true launch, you need to know your launch numbers and most you know, good online entrepreneurs will know this. And I want you to see how these numbers change as we move down the funnel. So let's say these are actually based on a launch we did at one point. So within my content ecosystem, my email list, everything, I tell people, hey, I've got a live webinar coming up and I had 2,342 people come to the registration page or sometimes we call it the landing page or even the squeeze page. All right, cool, so that's a lot of people, but how many of them actually opted in? Well, <clears throat> this particular landing page converted around 37%, which is a really solid number. Yeah. I've had pages convert higher, I've had them convert lower. 20% might be a common uh, you know, number for you to see in your own funnel, and it also depends on whether you're, this is cold traffic, warm traffic, or hot. Um, so we had 866 people sign up for the webinar. So we've already taken a big cut in the overall numbers, right? Well, what happens then is that only 41% of people, of those people, either came to the webinar or watched the replay. Mm. And this is where it's really important, right? So my funnel is moving along. I'm funneling people toward a sale, and I'm dropping off a lot, right? Already going from 2,342 visitors to 346 people who are still interested in what I have to offer. But that's okay, right? Because 346 people is still a lot and those are all potential customers that are thinking about the purchase. So the end of my, my live webinar, I make my pitch. I tell them the doors for this program are now open. Here's the price, right? Let's say it's 997 or whatever. And the doors are open for five days. Well, we had about 6% of um, those uh, webinar attendees or replay watchers uh, convert. This is a, a normal number for us. So we actually knew um, in order to hit 20 sales, we needed around you know, 2,342 people coming to the registration page. This is also the path to scale because let's say if I wanted to make 40 sales, well, then I need to drive more traffic to that registration page. I need to get 4,600, you know, or uh, paid visitors, right? And if I do, then these numbers should replicate. These numbers should should hold at scale. Yeah, yeah that's uh, amazing. And that's, uh, that's a really good number. Like the first time someone starts uh, launching this kind of uh, funnel, uh, they might not get those numbers, right? Um, sorry, I didn't hear the whole question. It cut out. If, the question yeah. is um those are good good numbers like uh, most people yeah. who are studying this for the first time they <clears> won't <throat> get these numbers right right probably not i would say your your landing page won't convert quite this well that's okay you might not have as many people show up or watch the replay that's okay um you might have fewer sales because you really need to close them at the end of the webinar you really need to know how to close and mm -hmm make a sale and create urgency and scarcity. Um, you know, in one of my first launches, like it was probably three years ago, I spent all summer building this course, getting ready, trying to fill my webinar, all this stuff. 
and I made like $300 and I put probably $1,500 into it mm. in terms of help and building it and building the mm. funnel and Facebook ads. So I took a major loss on that one, right? But I learned a lot and I learned what some of these numbers might be, right? I learned that my sales page wasn't good, my webinar slides weren't good, my emails weren't good. And you just have to start learning. You have to just start launching and just try. Awesome. Okay, cool. Thanks. Okay. We, have a, we have three funnel types that I want to show you, and then um, we'll kind of wrap it up. Or if we have you know, questions at the end, we can do that. Yeah. Um, live webinar, evergreen webinar, and what we call a strategy session funnel. Right? I'm going to show you these are kind of like webinar maps. Uh, if you want to be fancy, you can always pause or, or take a screenshot of this. I don't <laughs> mind. These are just simple funnel maps that I've created. The funnel that I just sh um, showed you guys was a, a basically an evergreen webinar or a strategy session funnel. But this is basically what a live webinar funnel is going to look like. You have that squeeze page or landing page. It immediately takes them to a confirmation page. And then they're basically just going to get emails reminding them of when the actual live webinar is going to happen, right? So leading up to that webinar. They end up in the live webinar room or they don't. Um, you, you send them to the sales page, right, at the end of that live webinar. And then, let's say your, your card is open for five days. They're going to get five emails over five days, just as an example, prompting them to go back to the sales page and join the program before the doors close. That's really all it is. Now, you, you obviously might throw in things like re Facebook retargeting ads or additional Facebook Lives or additional content to keep you know, funneling people toward your sales page while your cart is open, you're going to have a bigger kind of launch strategy around this. But in terms of the actual funnel, this is roughly what the funnel is going to look like. Wow, that's awesome. Okay. Now, I highly recommend that you start with a live webinar funnel because I really think, especially newer entrepreneurs, need to learn to launch live. You need to learn to do it on the fly. You need to um, just get that experience under your belt before you try to do an evergreen webinar funnel. Um, you're going to see a lot lower conversions on an evergreen webinar funnel because it's just always there, right? There's nothing, it's not as exciting because it's not live and people can tell it's not live. Okay. However, do you, yeah, go ahead. Do you act like it is live? No, I don't. So, so how do you recall it? So it's basically yeah. like a, regular video but with slides yeah yep it's a regular video like of slides just like me talking over this right now it's going to be me talking over slides but i'm going to be pretty animated i'm going to be energetic uh, i'm not going to try to pretend like there's people in the room or something or that i'm you know saying hey jessica from florida thanks for being <laughs> here um so it, it, usually yeah i'm recording a video like that and we call it you know a, a value video or something however if you want you can take a, a webinar recording that was live and put it into Evergreen and just say basically this is a replay. How, there are a lot of funnels out there that are going to try to trick you and they're going to try to pretend like it's live when it's clearly not. Mm -hmm. But a lot of new people and new consumers online don't know the difference. So in, in this case, you would, you know, with an Evergreen funnel, you're either putting in the, just the replay of a live webinar or you're re-recording your webinar just kind of on your own and you're adding it in there as kind of like a value video. Okay, cool. And yeah. I've even uh, heard uh, some people doing like, it's um, it's a evergreen webinar. It's not, the, the video is not live, but there's someone in on the team who's mm -hmm. chatting live with the yep. people who has question. It's a great option. Yeah. It's okay. a great option to add that, that live element, right? Okay, yeah. cool, thanks. So um, again, very similar to the live webinar, except it's evergreen, meaning it's always playing. That's all that evergreen means, right? At the end of that evergreen webinar replay, you're leading them to a sales page, and then they're getting those emails again to prompt them to buy. The biggest challenge with this kind of funnel, there's no urgency or scarcity, right? So it, there's not the excitement of a live launch, and if the doors aren't truly closing in five days, they don't really have a reason to buy soon. You need to build urgency and scarcity around your offer or else you're just not going to get sales. Um, this is a basic principle that every entrepreneur needs to know. 
So, so you don't do some fake uh, scarcity things? You can. A lot of people do. Yeah. A lot of people say, yeah, the doors are closing in five days. <laughs> But in reality, if I just opt into the funnel with another email address, then the doors are open for me again for five days. Okay, so why don't you do it then? I don't think it's genuine. Um, I just keep pushing people toward scheduling that strategy session. Um, you know, and basically, you could just say this offer is going to go away. You know, so in your emails, you could say, you know, my offer for you to schedule a strategy session is good for the next few days or whatever. Um, I, you can, and I think I've probably done it before where I've said, listen, the, you know, this opportunity is going away soon. You can be vague like that if you want. It just depends on what you're comfortable with because, again, I think you have to be genuine in your, your content. You can't be misleading, but you do need to create that urgency and scarcity somehow. So you do whatever's comfortable for you. Okay. Um, another question I have is like the strategy call, like some people would do it, but some people would say like, it's way too much of work. Like how much does it cost to have a, someone doing it for you? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Is it expensive? In terms of the, doing the strategy sessions? Yeah, or? in terms of uh, having s someone in your team doing it. Like, how do you pay that person? Yeah, good question. I, I do have someone on my team who does it, and he does it for a commission okay. of this a sale. So he only makes money when there's a sale, um, and he knows his conversion rates for the calls. And if he does you know, three calls in a day, he knows he's probably going to convert one of them. Um, and he earns a commission. I think it's between 15 and 20%. Okay. That's cool. Um, yeah. Thanks so, for sharing that. Yeah. Sure. So for me as the owner, I know that, yeah, I only pay if, um, I pay that commission if there's an actual sale. Mm -mm. Otherwise, if you're doing the strategy sessions yourself, you might see higher conversion because people are excited to work with you and hear from you. Um, you just need to figure out if that's something you can build into your schedule or not. Yeah. Or if it's something you like doing. Strategy session funnels, our last one. This is the one that I kind of showed you guys. This is really what I have uh, running right now. Um, landing page, an email that just uh, basically says, hey, you just opted in. And then they watch the value video. The value video is, is like a, a webinar replay. It could be a webinar replay, but more often than not, it's just a pre-recorded lesson like this um, that, again, is peppered in with testimonials, social proof, And the call to action is to book a strategy session. You don't have to use this for just a course. This funnel works extremely well for things like consulting or a mastermind group or even a live event. You could sell a live event through a strategy session funnel, right? You're just offering that value in the va value video and then prompting them to schedule a call with you. So in reality, like you could set this up for a coaching business, for a therapy business, um, you know, there's just a lot you can do with this. It's a very common funnel. And once you understand this funnel, you're going to see it all over the internet. There's a lot yeah. of entrepreneurs that use this. What, what would you do with people who, who schedule the call and after the call, like two thirds of them don't buy? What do you like unsubscribe them or what? Because nope. you shared about uh, ad retargeting. Are you going to talk about it? Or? I'm not going to retarget them after they've had the call with me. I retarget them until they book the call, until they reach basically this confirmation page. What I do, if they, let's say they take the call, they don't convert, that's okay, it's no problem. All that I do is they get segmented back into the main part of my list, and they actually end up in another nurturing sequence in an active campaign. So that person is clearly not ready to buy, that's okay. They're not going to buy during this launch or this with this pricing that I just offered them, but that's okay. They might do it. They might buy in a year. They might buy in two years. They just need more nurturing. Mm -hmm. So uh, they end up in another nurturing email sequence in my list to get to know me. I send them more videos I've made. I serve them more. And then at some point, they can end up back in this funnel and book another strategy session if, if they want. Okay. That's yeah. awesome. Thanks. Okay. So yeah, you saw that funnel again. That's the funnel I'm currently using. Which funnel is right for you? We're almost done here. Like I said, start with a live webinar funnel. It's better for really learning your audience, learning how to launch, dealing with your nerves, um, understanding just the mechanics and the anatomy of a launch. Uh, it's just important that you start with this. You're also going to do, you're, you're going to be leveraging scarcity and urgency better than 
um, uh, you know, these other funnel types. You can sell to many people at once, right? This is basically your sales process. You can consider your webinar, you know, a place where, again, you're adding value, but you're also making your pitch, making your sale. You'll improve your ability to actually lead a webinar. You're going to get better. It's just going to, it's going to put some pressure on you to really perform, but that's, I believe that's a good thing for, for entrepreneurs. Then, once you have proof of concept with that funnel, I would say at least 10 paying customers, then you might choose to put this, that, that webinar funnel on Evergreen. You can sell an autopilot in this way if you have enough traffic, right? So you're sending people to that, that funnel. You can sell an autopilot, right? You can sell without a um, strategy session, right? Um, you're going to need a lot of traffic, and you're probably going to need um, some Facebook retargeting ads to get people to buy. Mm. Um, and again, if it's a product that's $19.95 or more, so if it's around $2,000 or more, I recommend that you just plan to do the strategy sessions. Okay. So are you mm. saying that you shouldn't use uh, oh. Facebook ads if your product is not like a four-figure product? No, I think you still can. I think if you can keep your costs low enough, um, then you certainly can and should. I mean, if you have, uh, I, I almost always use Facebook ads to fill my webinar. So even though I have a list, I have an audience, um, I still want everyone to know that I have a webinar coming up and I want to really fill the top of the funnel, right? That, that 2,346 registra registrants, I need a really good number like that in terms of people visiting my funnel so that I can actually make sales. So for me, you know, when we had, um, with those actual launch numbers, I think we spent probably fifteen or $1,500, $2,000 on Facebook ads, and that launch was, you know, a $20,000 launch, basically, because we had 20 students at, for a nine ninety seven product, and some of them did installments, so they pay a bit more. So you know, $22,000 or so on the $2,000 ad spend. It's really good. Okay. So, so, um, like if your product is only like 500 euros or dollars, mm -hmm. could you make it profitable using mm -hmm. paying ads as, as well? Yeah. You just need to know your cost per acquisition basically. So once you have your overall Facebook ad spend, let's say you do a small launch and you just want to get a hundred people to your webinar or something. Um, once you know your ad spend, then basically at the end of your launch, you're just going to divide however much you spent on Facebook ads divided by the number of sales you made, right? Okay. That's going to help you figure out how much did it cost you to actually acquire a new paying customer. Mm -hmm. And then once you know those numbers, you can scale it up. You might have a smaller ROI, but still a positive ROI. So it, it could cost you $200 uh, to acquire a new customer who's buying a $400 product. I would still take those numbers any day. That's yeah. that's a two x, you know, ROI, right? So, and and there are a lot of course creators who are making in, incredible money, like crazy amounts of money with products like this, where their margins are smaller, but they're doing it at scale, and they're just pouring money into to ads, right? This is the same way that e-commerce works. They might have small margins on you know, cheap products, but they're doing it at scale, and they know you know with that ad spend exactly what they're going to spend to acquire a customer and they just ramp it up from there. Yeah. And that's good for the branding because uh, you show up all the time to a lot of people. Exactly. And you're building your list every yeah. time you're doing a launch. So even if you have less sales than you thought, you, you can keep nurturing those leads for next time. Okay. Thanks. Cool. Uh, again, for higher ticket, 1995 and above, use the strategy session funnel. You have to be comfortable conducting sales calls. You need a script uh, or to develop one or buy one. Uh, it's going to have the highest potential for a return, and it's a very good option when your audience is small. So you're also going to be getting to know them, understanding their pain points better. It's just good experience to practice and to have these sales calls. Okay. Um, real quick here, I know we're running out of time. How to become an instant funnel ninja. Well, all I want you to do is actually go out and opt into as many funnels as you can. So I would create like a throwaway email address, like a a fake one basically, <laughs> uh, and just start opting into funnels that you see all over the place, whether it's through Facebook ads or Instagram or blog posts. Um, opt into every funnel you can, you can find online, and observe your personal reactions, right? 
the online, the, the market is quite saturated and it's going to become more saturated because everyone's an entrepreneur these days. Everyone has, you know, a blog and a podcast and a course and whatever. So there's a lot of skepticism out there. There's a lot of people being fake and salesy and we don't want that to be you. You need to judge your own reactions to funnels, to email copy, to sales pages, whatever, so that you can get a reaction and you can use your reaction to to influence how you're going to actually build your business. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Study what works, right? Study what got you to a sale or got you to a sales page or almost purchasing or whatever. Um, and just take notes. Just learn funnels by going through funnels. Build and implement into your own funnels, right? So take what you've learned and basically build, implement, and just don't be afraid to try this stuff, knowing that if you've never launched before, your very first launch is probably not going to go perfectly. You might not even make any sales, but you have to get that launch out of the way so you can do it again and, and just learn and rinse, wash, and repeat. Um, a couple ways to follow me basically here as we wrap up. So my main brand is privatepracticeworkshop.com. That's for therapists really, but you can check it out. You can see my funnels. You can see my content, YouTube, podcasts. Uh, you can add me on Facebook. This is my Facebook name, not my uh, uh, um, uh, not my page, but my actual name where I do kind of professional stuff. Um, and then I also have the old uh, the, the Chris Decker style personal brand as well at thejohnclark.com. It's a simple website, but it's a place where you can learn more about me and get in touch if you'd like. Um, and then finally, something I'm offering you guys uh, as a little bonus here is if you want help even getting started with this stuff um, or you want help looking at your current funnels, um, I personally use Kajabi. I love Kajabi. Um, yeah, I can get you started. Yeah, I think I use it a lot. Um, I can get you started with Kajabi if you haven't already. So if you want to book a free 15 minute, um, basically a Kajabi funnel consult, you can do it at this, this link, djohnclark.com forward slash Kajabi consult. And that's not a sales call, not a strategy session. I'm not going to try to sell you in anything. I'm just going to uh, try to help you out and give you some free consulting here as a, a bonus or a thank you for, for watching this, uh, this um, little training here we've done today. Okay, that's awesome because you you're going to discover a great product and a great teacher. Yeah. So I could uh, highly uh, encourage you to go to uh, uh, book a call. Thank you, John, because that's a really great uh, gift. Like those calls can be in the mornings or on in the afternoon. Anytime, <laughs> <laughs> if you're in Europe, uh, if you're in, in Paris, uh, we'll be in the same time. Yeah, uh, and like yeah. if you um if you're an English speaker and American or British and mm -hmm. uh, you want to reach out to us, like I would love to organize a lunch or a dinner with uh, John. Uh, that would be great. Be great. Just, uh, reach out to us. Yeah, that yeah. Would be yeah. Awesome. And if you're in Paris and you want to have coffee or or talk about your business, I'm happy to meet up. I live in the ninth and I'm <laughs> nearby. <laughs> I've got, got time in the mornings before my day really ramps up. So happy to help out and um, um, I'd be happy to hear from you guys. Okay. Thank you so much, John. Um, any final words to share to people who want, who are building that business? What would you like to say to us today? Yeah, I would keep it simple. I would say just get started. Um, you're going to, not everything is going to work the first time. Like I said, you're going to have failures. You're going to have setbacks. You're going to have launches that don't go well. That's all truly part of the process, and you really can't get to a, a successful place without having those um, uh, those challenges to work through. So those are normal, but just get started and keep taking action, and you will, you will eventually get the results you want. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, John. It was so helpful. Thank you for the time you took to prepare all of this, and I see you around. Bye.